Now at five, more than 100 acres burned in the late and Snoqualmie fire. The latest details in our team coverage. Plus, dozens are still not allowed back into their homes because of the Snoqualmie fire. The very latest on the evacuation situation. And once hillside wildfires are put out, then comes the threat of mudslides. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC 4 News at 5 starts now. Good evening, I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. Thank you for joining us here at ABC 4 News at 5. A latent mountainside caught fire spread quickly late last night. That fire continuing to burn today. Yeah, most homes are no longer threatened, but it's far from over. We have team coverage tonight with everything you need to know from the status of the fire to evacuations. We begin with Rosie Nguyen. She's live from the Snoqualmie fire. Rosie. Glenn Emily, the smoke has noticeably subsided from the incident command center since we arrived here this morning. However, they do say that firefighters um, are still keeping that containment number at 0%, even though those numbers may be updated later throughout the day when they get a team back up to resurvey the area. Right now, they're just trying to get through that burn period, which is the most crucial part of the day. That's between 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock when it's the hottest and the fire activity is the strongest. We had viewers ask if the precipitation has helped at all. Officials say the rain has had a minimal impact on the fire. Firefighters say they're refraining from using retardant to fight the fire because this is a watershed area. As you mentioned earlier, the size of the fire is at approximately 117 acres. No structures damaged, but the fire has gotten as close as 200 yards from homes. We're hoping the, the weather will stay cooperative and the cooler temperatures, like we said earlier, should help. Uh, again, I'll just see what's going on up there with fire behavior. The topography changes a little bit as you get up higher, a little steeper. So we'll, we'll definitely have probably fire behavior throughout the day. One of the most important messages firefighters want to tell viewers at home is to keep your personal drones away from the area because it could stop firefighting efforts uh, just completely uh, fighting it from the air and that's to keep uh, the helicopter pilots safe. Now one of the main issues that hotspot crews are dealing with is the terrain. Let's bring in ABC 4's Jason Wynn with more on those problems. Jason. Rosie, there's a good 120 hotshot members up on this hill right now on this mountainside trying to put out that fire right now. Tonight, there's supposed to be another 60 hotshots that are expected to head up here, and we just saw another crew that headed right towards that fire, and some of those folks may spend the night to put out those spot fires that are going to pop up that they're expecting. Others, they're going to be cutting through the oak brush on the north, south, and west sides of the fire. Fire. The west side is where all those homes are, and that terrain is rough. It's rocky and it's steep, according to these hotshot crews. We talked with one of the search and rescue commanders who says the crews are bringing 70 to 100 pounds of gear with them at once. And we look to them and they're like, that's pretty amazing. So these guys really put in the extra effort. And then there's areas that they'll, they'll just have to fight through. It's really difficult. Now the biggest issue is going to be tonight. The crews are worried about those that wind switching and heading towards the west. And that's why you're going to see some of those helicopters like a Chinook and four other helicopters drop water throughout the night because they're trying to get ahead of that to make sure that fire is out before they start their work as it has that wind heads west. I'm Jason Wynn, live in Layton, ABC4 News. Thank you, Jason. Well, it was a long, stressful, even frantic night for the 120 households evacuated. Just the unknown weighing heavy on those having to walk away from their homes. ABC 4's Andrew Reeser continues our team coverage tonight, showing us how the community rallied to give a helping hand. Mountain View Baptist Church in Layton was open to evacuees who needed water and other supplies after a night of insomnia. We didn't sleep much. We went to our daughters and slept in the car because we didn't want to wake them. We saw the fire starting, what? Uh, 10, 930. 9.30, and we were watching and watching and thinking what's going to happen here. All day, evacuees watched as crews worked tirelessly to protect homes. These guys put their lives on the line, and we're, we're grateful for that. The American Red Cross setting up the evac center. Water, food, snacks, um, and information. To help anyone in need. We'll be here until the evacuation um, has been lifted from uh, Layton City. In Layton, Andrew Reeser, ABC4 News.
Thank you, Andrew. Well, as of this afternoon, partial evacuation orders were lifted at Maxine Drive, 3300 East and Boulder Drive. However, all other evacuation orders do remain in place. Now weather, it plays a huge factor in our wildfire dangers. And the Snoqualmie fire, well, it's no different. Lana Brophy live explaining why rain could actually be a two-edged sword here. Alana. You're right, Glenn, Emily. We've actually seen weather help us out. The Snoqualmie fire continues to burn behind us. That new burn scar freshly evident there on the Layton foothills. And as we take a look at the skies, that is one of the most useful tools that has helped in fire mitigation today. It's that cloud cover. Cloud cover in Layton for the morning and the bulk of the afternoon hours allowed for some cooler temperatures, which compared to yesterday's almost triple digit heat really helped. We see relative humidity increasing with these cooler temperatures. It allows for fire fuels to become a little more moist and helps crews when they're fighting the fire. The burn scar of the fire is already very evident. Flames continue to char those latent benches and monitoring a burn scar is just as important as monitoring flames. Fire crews in Layton say if they can avoid one thing for the next several hours and days, it would be thunderstorms. Thunderstorms can create a problem because they have what we call downflow winds or outflow winds. They come down out of the storm and they go in all directions, so they're really hard to predict you know how they're going to affect the fire if they're if it really will be downflow or if it'll just be really strong in one direction. So we just keep our heads up when there's a thunderstorm. Heavy rain is typically very helpful, but it's something they want to stay away from when it comes to the winds. You're watching that chopper drop there on the mountain. It is a double edged sword and something that we have to be careful with. Tackling flames is the first obstacle, but when it comes down to it, tackling the burn scar is the next. I'll show you why coming up on ABC 4 News at 6. Reporting now in Layton Live, I'm Alana Brophy, ABC 4 News. Alana, thank you so much. Well, here we have the Snoqualmie fire that we've been talking about. Weather playing a factor. They said the hardest time for or the most difficult time is between two and six. Were those the hours they were saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To and fight this fire? Yes. Yep. Dan, uh, you've <laughs> kind of been keeping an eye on the right. conditions here. What's the very latest? Well, the latest is that the conditions have been very favorable, especially early today with the cloud cover. There have been areas of slight chances for rain, a little bit of rain that's fallen nearby, nothing real heavy. And the good news is the winds have stayed fairly light, but they now are, and we have a weather station, by the way, right up by this fire. And the weather station just went calm. The highest wind gust in the last 10 minutes, six miles per hour. So that's a good thing. The problem will be if any thunderstorms get into the area, that's what the person that Alana was talking to said, you can get these downburst winds and then you get the fire burning in all directions. So that's the good news. Now let's see if there are any thunderstorms nearby. The good news is there are not. We do have thunderstorms in central Utah. You can see them marching north right there. A little heavy one right over the Kusharam area and uh, near Richfield, Circleville, pop and drop showers out there over the West Desert and, and down towards the Rock, uh, Great Basin National Park. Now we've ha we have a new fire that's burning near Malad due to a car accident. Look at all of these lightning strikes and thunderstorms in the area. Also, a couple of thunderstorms now moving into Paris and Montpelier. My good friend Steve Coons up there reporting the weather to us, telling us that temperatures have been hitting the low 90s and upper 80s. Any rain, he says, would be good, but it wouldn't help his barley or his wheat crop because it would not, he wants to harvest it, but he would take the rain. That's what he said anyway. Back to you. We'll have more on the uh, weather forecast coming up in just a bit.